good morning. Good morning, sir. Once again, please smile and say good morning. Good morning, good morning sir. Uh, are you all right? Yes, yes sir. sir. Quite comfortable. Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, sit back, relax. Okay, I'm going to today show you part of a very good movie. An uh, English film, part of an English, part of an American film, and I am going to talk today about if there is a polite language in English. You know, in English we do not have, as we have in Hindi, tum ap, or as in Telugu, we do not have ni miru or in Tamil, Ningal, we do not in English say, you know, sitandi or sittingo or in Hindi, we do not say in English sitye. How do they, how do they express politeness then? And many people feel, you know, many people who have researched Indian pronunciation in English, Indian spoken English. Indian written English, they are all praised for Indian written English. Indians score on international tests, Indians score highest marks in written English. I have been an examiner for IELTS, International English Language Testing System of the University of Cambridge for nearly a decade. And Indians, Indian average on written English is around 7 or 9 which is marvelous, even the British do not have that kind of thing. But our average in spoken English is below or near 5 on 9. Are you with me? Yes, do you get me? Yes. Sir. Okay. And the reason is, you know, there are two or three very good reasons. Number one, we speak very rapidly. We become difficult for others to speak understand us. By others, I mean those who are not used to our pronunciation. There are one or two other problems in this month, rest of this month and part of good part of March, I will be talking about some difficulties we, the non-native speakers of English have pronouncing English words. But before I get into that, or one class only, that is today, I would like to draw your attention to polite language, how we can speak politely in English. Okay? It is a cultural factor. Each culture has different ways of expressing politeness. Today, we are talking about how we can speak politely in English. Am I clear to you? Okay? There are one or two things we may have to remember. I will talk about only those one or two things. But before I do that, I want you to watch a video clipping. Okay? This is from, this is a part of an American movie, which became very popular in the 70s, about 40, 50 years ago. Okay? Not a very new movie, but a highly interesting one, particularly for those who want to become engineer managers. Okay? I have taken about 6 minute clipping from that film. While you watch it, are you with me? Yes, sir. While you watch it, I like you to pay attention to words like please write. How do you pronounce it? Please. Please, from the tip of the tongue. How do you pronounce it? Please. Okay. How do you pronounce it? Thanks. 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 From the tip of the tongue again. Say it. Thanks. Thanks. And what is this? Sorry. Sorry. What is this? Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Pay attention to the use of these three words. Right? 
also pay attention to some other details like who is polite to whom. You are going to watch four people. If you can take their names, please take their names down on your notebook and just see. The question is, does everyone, are you with me? Yes. Yes. Does everyone treat everyone else equally politely? What indicates politeness in English okay, or in American English? Okay? So, we will watch the movie with these questions. The question, the next question is, What is the question? Please. Are they all equally, equally polite, polite to one another? another? Yeah, okay. Once again, you know, just listen. Are they all equally polite to one another? Are they all equally polite to one another? Come again. Are they all equally polite to one another? More slowly. Are they all equally polite to one another? Are they all equally polite to one another? Right. Watch this video clipping with that question. Okay. Are you relaxed? Are you okay? Yes. Not tense, I hope. Okay, great. Okay. I hope you will hear better now. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you, my dear. It was a long walk from that gate. Mm -hmm. Is it okay now, the volume? Yes. Pay attention, please. Mm -hmm. uh, there a little talking to you. I think you better lock that door. Well, I see you've done this sort of thing before. Oh, yes, my dear. But it's against the law. Why do you do it? Well, you see, I'm a widow, and I have a married daughter in New York. Sometimes I get lonely for and for the grandchildren, so I go down to the airport in Los Angeles, and I get on a plane that's going to New York. And then when I'm ready to go home, it's, well, vice versa. Just like that, without a ticket? Oh, my dear, I couldn't possibly afford a ticket. I just have my social security and this small pension that my late husband left me. Have you ever been a stowaway on any other airline? Oh, yes. But I like Transglobal the best. <laughs> well, it's nice to meet a satisfied customer. How about patrolling? Highway Patrol is bringing him in. How long before I'll be here? About half an hour. Good. Now I'll have that sandwich. I'm starving. I haven't eaten since about... Oh, I'm sorry. I... No, don't go away. I'd like you to meet Mrs. Quonset, the stowaway I was talking about before. This is Mr. Bakersfeld, general manager of the airport. Well, how do you do? It's a pleasure to meet someone so important. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, ma'am. Don't go. Come, sit with us. Have a cup of coffee and, and a sandwich. Perhaps Mr. Bakersfeld could impress upon Mrs. Quonset that this isn't a very nice thing to do. Mrs. Livingston hasn't been able to. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Quonset, uh, what you've done is, uh, is dishonest. You've broken the law. <laughs> you've defrauded Transglobal. Don't you realize they can prosecute you? But they wouldn't, would they? I don't think it'd be very good public relations for a big airline to prosecute a little old lady just because she wanted to visit her daughter. May I have one? Well, sure. I didn't eat much on the plane. The beef was a little too well done. And the salad dressing had garlic in it. I think you should tell them, my dear, that very often elderly people can't tolerate garlic. It gives them gas. Well, I'll certainly mention it to our chef. Thank you. Not at all. Now look, Mrs. Quonset. Since you've had so much free travel from Transglobal, the least you could do is tell us how you get aboard our flights. 
Well, my dear, I use many methods. But mostly I like to be in the airport early enough to get me a boarding pass. But our boarding passes are ticket folders. Yes, I know. I go to a counter and I tell them I've lost mine. And may I please have another one? I always pick a counter where the clerks are busy and lots of people are waiting. They always give me one. <laughs> but it's just a blank folder. It isn't made out as a gate pass. I do that myself in the ladies' room. I know from experience just what to write. And I carry one of these big black pencils like the airlines use in my purse. See? Yes, I do. I'll keep that if you don't mind. <laughs> well, it's really mine. But if you want it, I suppose I can get another one. So now you have a boarding pass, Mrs. Quartz. What then? Well, then I go to the departure gate. Coffee? No, thank you. And I wait till the young man checking tickets there is busy, and then I walk past him and onto the plane. Do you hear that, Mr. Coakley? <laughs> and no one stops you, not even the stewardesses? If you get on late enough, they're hanging up coats, you know, talking to the men. I, I, I just showed them my folder quickly, you see. I'll keep that, too. But I'm sure you don't always use a boarding pass. No. Sometimes I tell them that my son has gone aboard, but he dropped his wallet. I carry a man's wallet in my hand. <laughs> <laughs> that works best of all. I must say, Mrs. Quonset, you have everything figured out very carefully. My late husband taught me to be thorough. He was a teacher of geometry. He always said, you must consider every angle. <laughs> my late husband was a lawyer, and he always said, uh, watch out for sweet-looking, innocent little old ladies. I'm beginning to understand what he meant. So you're a widow, too. Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. <laughs> you're young and attractive, and I'm sure. Let's confine the conversation to you, Mrs. Quonset. We're sending you back to Los Angeles. I invite you to watch this uh, clipping and this movie as many times as you have time or like, you know, maybe once or twice, but today we do not have time to rewind and go back to it. But did you see that there is frequent use of these words? Which words? Did you find any example of use of please? Yes. Yes, please. May I have one, please? Okay. Could I possibly, you know, please? Did you find example of thanks? Did you find examples of sorry? Okay. Not many, but there are, you know, examples when. Who is? Or what is the name of the general manager? Mr. Baker. Mr. Baker's field. Okay. What is the name of the old lady who travels without? Proper ticket, Mrs. Kwan said. Okay. So, you know, they apologize, they say once. Are they equally polite to one another? Who is more polite to the old lady? The manager. The manager. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Livingston, is she also equally polite to the old lady? How do you say that? She never uses please or thanks or sorry. She also interrupts the old lady. Okay. Is old lady polite to these people? What, what, what does she say? What, you know, I mean her general attitude is of politeness, but, but does she speak any word which indicates that she is really polite? My dear, very frequently, you know, Mr. Livingston is much younger than the elder lady, and the lady very frequently says, Oh dear, oh my dear, you see, you know, I am a widow, you know, my children live away, my grandchildren live away, trying to include the younger lady into her own story. Okay? The old lady is at the best of her behavior. She is in a difficult situation. She can even be prosecuted, though she knows that she may not be prosecuted, but she is at the best of behavior. The, you know, next time you watch an English movie, next time you read an English book, also watch for these things. You know, we in India, by we I mean English teachers in India, we teach you a lot of grammar, we teach you a lot of 
spelling, writing, but we hardly teach you any pronunciation and we almost never teach you cultural aspects of the English language. Am I right? Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. sir. I want you to learn these things on your own and this can be a good beginning. Let me come to these three words and when you use them, when you say please, when you say thanks and when you say sorry and are there other indicators of politeness or absence of politeness. Are we together? Yes, yes sir. Okay. You will need to take notes please, right. Okay. Unlike us, unlike us in India, you know you, we in India, in, in nearly every language in India, except perhaps Punjabi and Marathi, but even there in formal situations, you have two levels. One is, one is plus honor. We say aap baithye, uh, in Bengali we say aap ni boshun, in Tamil we say ninge ukarango, in Tamil we say miru kuchandi. Okay? I, English does not have like that. English does not say sitandi, English does not say sitye, English does not say situn, okay? like Bengali. It has only one word, s i t. It does not have these plus and minus. honor paradigm. What is that word? Honor. honor. What is that word? Honor. What is that word again? Honor. honor. Yeah. In, in English, it is the same word for the king and for the queen and for the driver of the king and the queen. Okay? Same word. You know, they do not say, as I told you, unlike us, they do not add anything else. So, how do they say, how do they speak politely? Do you mean, do we mean to say that they never speak politely? So, English, English does not have two, English does not have two pronouns. We have aap, tum, okay. English does not have, used to have. If you go back into the history of the English language, English used to have you and thou. Have you heard these words? Yeah. Thou, okay. But now thou is confined only to church, okay particularly since the first world war 1919, since adult franchise came to Britain, you know everyone is you. The king is you, the queen is you, the salesman is you, the driver is you, the lift operator is you. Okay? They do not have two pronouns, they do not have two kinds of verbs unlike us. Okay? Unlike us, they do not have another word for elder relatives. Okay? In, in Tamil, your elder brother is Anna, okay, but not in not in English. Elder brother, younger brother, they are all brothers. Okay, they do not say uh, brother na or some such thing. In Hindi, you have bhai, bhaiya, or you know what else? Dada. Dada. Or uh, what else? Bhai sahab. Any passenger traveling with you on the train older than you is uncle, chacha, mama. Okay? English does not have this kind of thing. Anybody from my mother's village can be my mama, can be your, your mother's village can be your mama. English does not have things like that. When I travel on train, frequently people your age call me dadaji. Dada, you know, perhaps they mean that I can fight with them or something like that. Okay? English does not have, you, you know, nobody, nobody likes to be called uncle and it is not their culture. You address them with respect and you say Mr. Chaudhary. Okay? So, the question is, in the absence of words in our language that is express politeness, how do they manage? Do you see the question? Are you with me? Okay? How do they express politeness? They do the following this is what they do. English uses sir, can you help me sir, okay. can you pass it on madam or can you pass it on mister 
or if I know your name, I can say, can you give it to me, Arun? Can you do it for me, Kiran? Okay? Use name. If you do not know name, then use sir, madam, please. You know, this is how they, not he or she, no pronoun without the noun. Okay? They frequently use sorry, please, thank you. Okay? Do you, you may have seen that rhyme, you may have heard that rhyme. What is that rhyme? Shall we say it? Shall we say it together? That couplet, hearts like doors. Come on, try it without me first. Hearts like doors will open with ease to very, very little keys. And don't forget that two of these. I thank you and if please. It, it was not like poetry. Kindly try and listen. Hearts like doors. What did I say? I took pause. Hearts like doors will open with ease. You know, there is rise and fall. Hearts like doors will open with ease. Come on, say it. Hearts like doors will open with ease. Okay. To very, very, because there is emphasis, you know, it is repeated. Very itself is an emphatic word. Okay? You are talking about something which is not just good, which is very good. So, it is an emphatic word. You, you place emphasis okay? more. Okay? So, please, to very, you know, your lower lip must come close to the upper teeth. Watch my lips. Not the prettiest of lips here, of course. Okay, to very, very. Okay, please say it. To very, very little keys. And don't forget. Say it. And don't forget that two of these. You know, it's like sing song. And don't forget. And don't forget. That two of these, that the two, two of these, are, are, I thank you, I thank, thank you, and if, and if, if you please, you please. Once again, I'll say it, and you will say it after me. Okay, you will follow me, like we do kirtan, like we do prayers in our villages. Hearts like doors will open with ease. Hearts like doors will open with, with ease. To very, very little keys. To very, very little keys. And don't forget. And don't forget that two of these. That two of these are. I thank you. I thank you. And if, and if you please. You please. Now do it without me. One, two, three. Come on. Hearts like doors will, will open with ease. To very, very little keys. And don't forget that two of these are I thank you and if you please. Some people got in a hurry. Once again, you know, once again, go take your time. What is the hurry? You know, we still have 25 minutes. Okay? Hearts like, just listen and watch, do not repeat. Hearts like doors will open with ease to very, very little keys. And do not forget that two of these are, I thank you and if you please come again. Begin. Hearts like doors will open with ease to very, very little keys. And do not forget that two of these are, I thank you and if you please. This is English rhythm. Okay? We will be talking about English rhythm beginning next week. You know, why English sounds like English, not like Telugu or Hindi. Okay? Right? Because they have first a different rhythm. Let us look at, are there any rules in cultural manners? Are you with me? 
get it right. In cultural manners, there can be no written rules. The culture has only one rule. Do you know what is that rule? The rule of heart, love. Okay. What is that? Love. What is that? Love. Okay. Not in the Hindi film sense. A twenty-year-old boy chasing a twenty-year-old girl. That's not love. It is anything else. Love means love for the weak, the less lucky, the less learned, the less privileged. Okay. Care for them, concern for them, and love is best expressed in language, in gestures, in what you do. Culture has one rule, and that rule manifests itself in many ways. Okay. In gratitude, in affection, in ability to help others, in ability to recognize others' help. Okay. Let us look at some parameters. What do you thank for when somebody does you a favor? When somebody, give me the word, when somebody does you a favor, give me an example. Give me an example. Thanks for your time, okay. thanks for the attention, thanks for calling. Do you say that? How many people say that? Do you say that to your callers, to each of your callers? Not each of your callers. To whom? Okay, maybe formal. Okay, maybe you don't have to do it with. Or when somebody compliments you, I say, "Wow, how handsome!" What is the word? What will be your response? Thank you. Suppose I say, "Marvelous shirt." What will be your response? Thank you. Thank you. What will be your response? Thank you. Thank you. You know, compliment. Or I give you a gift. Please accept it with my best wishes for your birthday. Okay? Whose birthday today? Please accept this. What would you say? Thank, 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 you. thank you. The same enthusiasm, whether it is a ring with diamond or it is a chalk piece. You know, culture demands that you acknowledge the gift with. Okay? Can you write one sentence each for each of these? Somebody write a. You know, somebody has done you a favor. What would you say? Write the word of favor and then say thanks. Thanks for, just as I said, time. Okay, thanks for. Write first, give the compliment and then write thanks. Come on, quickly. Write compliment and then say thanks. Say, for example, I complimented you. Oh, what a lovely shirt. Okay. Right? Or you made a very good presentation today. Okay. So, give a compliment to your friend. Okay. Or say some words with a gift and then say thanks. So, for example, I say, please accept it with my best wishes for your birthday. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Ashwini, what did you get? Come on. Favor and then say thanks. Tell me, please. Whatever you may have written is all right. Okay. In these matters, we rarely go wrong. The point is, we should remember to thank. Come, please. What a marvelous shirt. Marvelous shirt. And your friend says, thanks. Now, do each other with each other. Okay. You have written the sentence. One person tells the other some compliment and say thanks. Let us see how you do it. Okay. Get into groups. That is next to you, somebody. Maybe Arun, you can turn behind or one of you can turn behind. Just with another person, say it to each other. 
Please, come on. Do it. Do it. So we thank for all of these things. Okay, go on. Do it. Do it for a couple of minutes, please. Also this. Okay, we'll do more of this. Come back. Okay, we'll do more of this. Say, for example, somebody takes interest in you. Are you all right? What do you say? Yes, thanks. What do you say? How are you? Fine, thank you. How? What do you say? Somebody has taken interest in you, or somebody invites you. Can you join me for tea this evening? Oh yes, thank you. What do you say? You know, enthusiastically, you can say yes. That's not good manners. Okay, you say, oh yes, of course, by all means. Okay, can you join me for tea this evening? Of course, by all means. Thank you. How kind of you. Okay, or somebody makes you an offer. Can I bring this book for you? Oh yes, definitely. I'll be so grateful. You know. These are indicators of polite. Can you talk among yourselves for two minutes? Any one of these things, not all of these things. Tell each other and say thanks. I will go around the class and I will hear you. Please try whoever you can, capture them on the camera, please. Come on, do it. Slowly, carefully, with a smile. Come on, act this play. Can we go have a cup? <laughs> You can talk to Ash Ashwini. Can this young man talk to you? Okay. You can do, do, you can. Can we have a cup of coffee? Thanks. Yes. Right. Oh, yes. Of course. By all means. Oh, yes. Of course. And take turns. Take turns. Okay. You ask me. You can invite Aparna and Aparna can Thank invite you. you. Ashwini, you can invite my friend. What's your name? Yeah, Chinmaya. Chinmaya Chinmay can invite. invite. You take turns. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Oh, you are quiet, man. Happy birthday. <coughs> okay, can I have your attention back? You see, can I have your attention? Seriously, all of us know these things, don't we? Say yes or no. Yes, sir. All of us know these things, but so few of us ever use it. You know, we have a different culture. We we thank very profusely for our, for in in a very different manner. Sir, my entire family for generations will be grateful to you. <laughs> you know, we go to Tirupati, say, Balaji, please, you took my son at IIT through JE. Entire family goes after, after JE results, Tirupati is crowded. Okay? They do not do that. When their son co crosses through JE, they do not go to Rome or to Canterbury. It is a different culture, but the point is, if you speak Telugu, you will have to say Miru Kuchandi. You can't say Ab Bato. Can you do that? Say yes or no? No, you cannot. Language, <coughs> please write. Language goes with culture. Language goes with culture. It is not divorced from culture. Okay? So next time somebody gives does you a favor, okay? Next time somebody takes interest in you. Next time somebody pays you a compliment, somebody tells you, oh, what a marvelous shirt. You do not have to say, nahi, ye to maine second hand mein liya tha. <laughs> you do not have to say that. Okay? <laughs> you do not have to justify. If somebody asks you, how are you, you do not have to say, oh, to aaj headache hai. I have got a sort of boring class by Shiris Chaudhary, you know, I got headache. You do not have to. Even if you have headache, you say, fine, thank you, but I do not feel all that good today. Do you see the point? It is their culture, you know. 
if somebody takes interest in you, you thank the person, right? So, get into the habit of before you leave this institute, get into this habit of you know acknowledging or when do you say please. Okay. For example, when you make a polite request, there can be a non polite request, you go to salesman, you go to the Gurunath store, you go to another shop and you can tell them, can I have a notebook, but a better way would be, what would be the better way? Notebook. Can please. I have a notebook, please. please, when you make a request, you want to talk to somebody and there is a lot of noise, you can say, can I have silence? If you do not say please, it would look like you know rude. Do you know this word? <coughs> rude, very bad. You lose friend immediately. In an English speaking culture, you make a request without please, unless you are of course very intimate, you go to the bathroom together. Okay? you will lose your friend even there. Okay. So, you know this is, this is part of their culture. If you want somebody's attention, you will have to say, may I have your attention please, it is not just the air hostess on the aircraft, everyone. Okay. Before you pick up the phone and before you talk to the other person, you will have to remember this word and when the other person picks up the phone and says hello, then the first thing you have to say can I speak to you for a minute please or can I speak to you for a moment please and if that person says of course by all means then go on. In India quite often we do not ask that very simple elementary question. We hear hello from there and we start unloading ourselves or hey, the class today that I had was so boring really I regret having come to IIT. If you have to say that, you can say that, but before that you must ask, can I talk to you for a moment, please, what would you say? Can I talk, talk to you, to you for a moment, moment, please? Yes, make it really genuinely pull out, polite or sometimes when you add, want to add force, more emphasis, okay. lot of students here come late, please do not come late. How many students today came after 9 o'clock, came to the class after 9 o'clock, raise your hands. I am speaking to you, come on time, please. Okay. My face will be wry, but I still the word will still be there. Can you come on time, please? Tell me. Can you come on time, please? But to those who came on time, I will say, oh many thanks, please. Good to have you here. These, these things are part of their culture, you know. If you want to draw somebody's attention, you know, you once again say, suppose you are traveling on a bus and the conductor does not pay you attention. You cannot say, hey conductor, I am going to murder you. Aman and I do that in Patna. Okay? We never say please, we tell the conductor, ek darbhanga ka ticket do. Okay? We do not. Good manner is, Tell the conductor, want to Paris please, want to Sikandrabad please, want to Medhi Padmam please or whatever, wherever you know, you must say please. Sometimes you know, if you do not know the name, you can say sir, madam, mister or if nothing else says please. Okay. Can you move a little please, somebody occupying your seat on a reserved uh, compartment you want to take that, occupy that seat, you just cannot say, hey get lost. What can you say? What should you say? Come on, tell me. Can, can you move a little please? Can you move a little please? Can you allow me please? Best manner is, though you have a right, but you ask for it as a favor. Okay? Similarly, you sorry, you know, when you apologize, you have hurt somebody you have done something wrong, then you, you must say, you know, human beings make mistakes. Do you know that proverb which says, to err is human, to forgive divine. So, human beings make mistakes, of course, do not make the same mistake twice. 
Okay, never try. You know, be alert, be smart. But it happens. Sometimes you make mistakes. Then, the good manner is not to hide it, not to conceal it, not to be you know stealthy about it, but very openly, very apologetically, politely say, "I'm sorry, I." I, I misspelled your name. I am sorry I called you by another name. I am sorry I did not realize, I did not know. Okay? Or when somebody offers you something, can you have a cup of tea with me this evening, please? The best manner is not, you know, go to hell, I have quiz tomorrow. Okay? The best manner is sorry, sorry, I cannot accept your invitation, I have quiz tomorrow. Okay, it does not cost you anything, you know. Okay, please write, please write. Civility costs nothing. I remember my history professor, you know, a great man. He, he told me this way, so I am passing it on to you. You can tell this, you can pass it on to your student. Civility costs nothing, but buys everything. Repeat that sentence to me. Humility costs nothing, nothing but buys everything. everything. Okay, together, everybody, please repeat that sentence. Civility costs nothing, nothing but buys everything. everything. Yes, civility costs nothing, but buys everything. Believe me, there is no problem good use of language cannot solve. All you have to do is you have to be determined, you have to be polite and you have to respect the other person, whether younger than you, weaker than you, less learned than you, less lucky than you. Okay? You know, English uses some other kinds of, you know, form. Say for example, English uses, English does not have aap baithye, but English has things like kya baithenge. English does not say sit down, but English say Will you please sit down? What does it say? Never make a request except in a question form. Can you tell me the time, please? Can you tell me the time, please? It's not a, it's not a question. It's a request. When somebody tells you, "Can you tell me the time, please?" the answer is not yes. The answer is uh, nine fifty. Okay. That is the answer because it is a request. So, always make a request in the question form. May I come in, sir? Okay. Or may I come in, please? Or may I join you, please? Would you like to try this new? Can you read this sentence to me? Next sentence. With pauses slowly. How? Would you like to try this new shirt? Now, begin with the beginning, with the first sentence. What is the first sentence? Can I borrow, please? Go with, you know, pauses. Can I borrow your pen, please? What is it? Can I borrow your pen, please? Next. Can you tell me the time, please? Next. May I come in, sir? May I come in, sir? Come again. What is that? May I come in, sir? Next. Would you like to try this new shirt? Yeah, would you like to try this new shirt? Take pause. Would you like to try this new shirt? Please come again. Would you like to try this new shirt? Please. Next. Will you marry me? Okay. This comes from an old song. This comes from a sailor's song. I will give you silken shirt and I will give you tea. No, no, tea went from India to Britain. It was precious, only rich people had tea, poor people had beer or bitter, you know, that sort of thing. So, I will give you silken shirt. Silk came from China. Those British who were rich put on silk and had tea in the afternoon. Okay? Even now, you know, tea is a very important uh, part of their daily life. So, you know, th that, that is where this song comes from. I will give you silk and shirt and I will give you tea. Will you madam marry me? Come on, sing this song. I will give you silk and shirt. 
looks like you were going to bury that girl rather than asking her to marry you. Okay? Make it polite, make it musical. I will give you silk and shirt. Come on. I will give you silk and shirt. Shirt has a long vowel. It is shirt. Shirt. Come on. I will give you silk and shirt. And I will give you tea. Your lips must spread. Tea. Don't you see the British are long, you know. Okay. Say it again. I will give you silk and shirt, and I will give you tea. Will you, madam, marry me? Marry me? Okay. So it is a question form. You don't go and grab the hand of the girl like in the film. Come marry me now. Okay. That girl will poison your tea the first day she lives with you. Okay. Or that boy. Okay. Sorry. Pardon me for bringing that gender thing into it. Similarly, you know what is the last sentence? Would you like? Yeah, you know, would is hardly heard. Would you like? What is it? To try, to try this new recipe, please. Okay. Similarly, there are indicators of impoliteness. In English culture, these things indicate impoliteness. What are those? You should come at 9 o'clock going in Indian, great Indian tradition at 9.15. Please believe me, nobody will work with you in those cultures. Next. Speak slowly. Rapid speech is disrespectful speech. No matter who you speak to, to your brother's son or to your mother or anyone else. What is next? Listening without looking at the speaker. Okay, the speaker tells you something, and yes, ah, right, okay, yeah, right. Not even with the best of friends. Don't do that. Next. Interrupting the Interrupting speaker. The speaker. Okay, you remember that Mrs. Livingston interrupted the old lady. She was not respectful. Okay, next. Last bench here, please. Next. No, last bench here. That is already done. Next. Yeah, do not say he told me. Say that, you know. John told me. Robert told me. Next. Last bench here. Using informal language in a formal situation. Yeah. You cannot say, hi everybody. Are you a Michael Jackson and am I your fan? We are equals. We are in a conference, all engineering scientists together. Okay? I have said all these things in the book I have given you, the chapter. Okay? Can you help me please, the chapter call. Kindly go through, there are exercise sentences. Do that exercise with one another in the hostel. The point is, manners of cultural are not very difficult to learn. Manners of culture must be learnt and practiced. Use them for the, next, for the rest of your life on this campus. Try and use these words. What are these words? Please, thanks, thanks. sorry. Remember, repeat that sentence. Hearts like doors. Come on. Hearts like doors. We will open, open with ease. To very, very, very little, little ease. ease. And, and please, everybody, I thank you. If you please, thank you. Have a good day.